and welcome. Uh, welcome to our new newest kit, which is the Atelier Shoop Lea dress, which I am just absolutely loving. I'm going to call it the ultimate in summer dresses because it's cool, it's breezy, it's floaty, it's swishy. It's just everything that you need in this kind of weather. So the Atelier Shoop um, Lea dress, yeah, the floatiest dress you'll ever wear this summer. That's Mark 1, which I love, and I've just finished making this one. Uh, if you want to see this swishing around, go to the end of the video. Um, I've done a little walkabout in it. I will take some photographs, so I'll try and pop them in here somewhere as well. Uh, yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So you'll have received your kit if you bought the kit, and in the kit you would have enough fabric to make this one, this one, or we will have a third version, which I'm hoping to make as well, because I just can't get enough of uh, these dresses. There's also enough fabric to make the belt as well. So I go through all the process in this video from cutting it out right through to finishing it. Size-wise, it comes in a range of uh, sizes, a size 34 to 52. So depending on what kit you bought, uh, depends on how much fabric you got. But there's only a very small amount of fabric in the difference between the two and it's just down to the layout. So you will have received your fabric, your little piece of interfacing, your reel of thread, your little piece of elastic, and you would have got some Microtex needles as well because I find Microtex needles are really good for sewing these types of really lovely viscoses. So these are beautiful quality um, and they're really lovely and comfortable and they're lovely and colourful is the word I was looking for. If you use a blunt needle on them you could possibly have some little runs or some little skags and catch some threads and then that is all you can see from your finished dress. So the Microtex needles, try, they eliminate the possibility of that happening. So all I can see is like a pinky colour, sorry. So yeah, try out the Microtex needles. Um, yeah, I don't think you'll ever go back to normal fine needles when you're sewing viscose again. They're really, really nice. My machine really liked them. So I don't think there's anything more I can say about the dress apart from the fact that I really love it. Um, I think viscose is definitely the best fabric for it. I think you could make it out of a cotton. It would be more poofy. Your little uh, ruffles would definitely stand up a little bit more. You can obviously make it without the ruffles if you like. So you just skip that part of the video and you just go straight to the binding. I chose the size 38, which is the size of my body measurements. Generally, when I'm making a blouse in a Tellier Jupe, I will size down to a 36 because I find the shoulders fit me better and it just feels more my size. But I decided to go with a 38 on this and I'm, and I'm really happy as well because I feel it's a roomy dress. It's really comfortable and I don't mind that extra bit of room in it. The only place that it feels a little bit wide is on the shoulders, but I do like a little bit of sleeve coverage anyway, so I don't mind that at all. If I went a little bit smaller, they might end up a little bit narrower and then, yeah, I wouldn't feel that my shoulders were covered enough. But other than that, I really love it. The only addition I've made is the um, belt. So yeah, let's uh, crack on with the sew along. If there's anything that you don't quite understand, uh, pop it into the comments of the sew along and I will try and help. But yeah, otherwise, happy sewing. So I have my fabric here uh, pre-washed and ironed. And here are all the pattern pieces. So first up, we have the front. Now, the Atelier Jou patterns don't come with any writing on them, you might have noticed. So what I do is I print out my pattern pieces and I add my notes. So this is the front. This is the important notch here, so just highlighting that. Then we have, this is the back. And this is the only important notch on that. Number four is the back neck uh, bias binding. And number five is the armhole binding. Again, 
it's on the bias. These are the shoulder ruffles if you fancy putting them on. I love all the ruffles so give me all the ruffles. This is the important notch. This is to the shoulder seam and then you'll notice here, here it says back and here it says front. This is our band that goes down the front on each side of the V. So this is the front band and we have to cut two of these and we have to cut interfacing. And then we're on to the skirt. So the skirt pieces. Number seven is the front uh, ruffle. And we're going to call this um, tier one. And what you'll notice on this is that it has a curly line up here and that's to signify the gathering. And then number eight is the back and we're going to call this tier one. And again, we have the curly bit here to show us where the gathering is. Then we have tier two. And we're going to cut two of these on the fold. And we'll see this is the fold symbol here, which makes me remember, of course, that we just want to cut one on the fold of tier one at the back and cut one on fold on the front and you can see the fold symbol there and then we have the bottom tier so this is tier number three and we want to cut two on the fold and again there's our fold symbol and here's our gathering symbol. So here's the instruction booklet. Uh, it's page 30 if you have the paper pattern. I'm not quite sure what page it is on the PDF but here's the fabric layout. So I always give a little look at this but you know what I'm like, I do my own thing. <laughs> so here's one band of sizes and here's another band of sizes. So basically one size takes, I think it's 25 centimeters more than the other. Here's a list of all the pattern pieces as well and the number of them you need to cut and also tells you all the different seam allowances. So there's basically a one and a half centimetre seam allowance uh, everywhere apart from when we're sewing the binding on the armhole there's one centimetre and then there is a three centimetres on the hem. So I have laid out my fabric. I've actually cut the selvages off because I sometimes find that when the fabric is pre-washed the selvages tend to kind of shrivel in and they make laying the fabric out really difficult. So I've spent some time laying it out to make sure that it's all square and that the sides line up and I've just basically laid out my pattern pieces. So I have a little plan. I'm cutting out the size 38 straight. Uh, no alterations and I went by my bust size so that's what it said just go by your bust size because there's lots of room in the waist and the hips. So what I have here is I have the back tier and the front tier. Now both of these need to be cut on the fold so what I've done is I've laid them out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my piece of fabric across there uh, you'll notice I've nothing pinned down, this is just like a little recce. Um, I'm going to cut across there, I'm going to fold in and fold in so that I'll have the two pieces on the fold. And then I'm going to cut everything else out. So I have my back here against the fold, I have my front here taking care that this is on the grain line. I have my ruffles here. I have one skirt piece here, tier two. I've tier three. I've got my bias strips here. I think they're going to fit here. I'll see. And then I have my front neck kind of facing, I think they called it. And then I've enough fabric up here to lay out my other two skirts. So that's what I'm going to do.
So I have these bits pinned in place and I'm sure there's lots of room left here for the two skirts but I'm just going to do a little, yes that's good, a little double check. This will be sure now before I cut. Now I'm about to lay my two skirt pieces here and before I do that I'm just going to cut two pieces for the belt. Now I'm adding the belt on because that's the finished look that I like. So what I've done is I've cut two little uh, cuts into the top end. This top end has been, um, it's been torn so I know it's along the grain line. The little cut is one and a half inches. And I'm literally going to tear that off. And I'm going to tear those two pieces for the belts off. And don't be afraid. Uh, because I've cut the selvage off, I can tear straight through. Uh, the reason I have torn it is I know now it's 100% on grain. You just have to pull out the little bits of thread after. I'm going to leave the two of them just stuck together like that for the moment. Uh, I find that if I cut across, it may not necessarily be on the grain and uh, it just makes making the little belt a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to lay out my last two pieces and cut them. So I've taken the pattern pieces off the two that I've cut and what I've done is I've put a pin in the top of them to signify which way is up basically so that I won't mix them up and that's just handier than trying to figure out which is the right way up um, <laughs> when I get back to that piece. I've decided that I'm not going to cut out the two front bands yet. I'm actually going to interface the two pieces and then cut through the four layers so I'll show you how I do that. Okay so I've started prepping my pieces so I've got my neck binding here and I have pressed one centimetre in on just one side. I've done the same with my armhole bindings. Now the important thing here is that the ironed in, the finished piece after you've ironed it in is two centimetres. So if, if when you were cutting it out it went slightly wonky just make sure that maybe you iron just a little bit less of the centimetre over so that the whole piece ends up being one centimetre. It's really difficult to cut these out on the bias without going a little on the wonky side. Then I've got these two pieces of fabric that I'm going to cut my neck binding out of. So my the neck pieces that are coming down the front of the V basically. So I've ironed my interfacing onto them. Um, I find this really handy if I'm doing like collars and things because it's very difficult, particularly on light viscose, to cut out a collar and then cut out the interfacing for everything to lay flat then when it's done. So not massively necessary with this, but I wanted to give you this kind of an idea of what I what I do with other shapes. So basically I've ironed it on first, so now I'm guaranteed that when I pin on my piece and cut it around, it's the correct shape. So, yeah, as I say, particularly when I'm doing collars. So I would try to do this when I'm doing the Olivia blouse. Don't think I did it in the sew along, but um, yeah, I, I, I definitely do this when I'm doing a facing because a lot of times um, when you have your facing inside your top, then you'll find that they don't quite line up. And I think a lot of that is to do with the inaccuracy of cutting out the facing cutting out the interfacing, ironing them together and then they end up not quite like the pattern piece. So this is just my little preparation piece. So I have my Microtex needle in the machine. So I like the Microtex when I'm sewing these fine viscoses because it's got a sharper point on it. They're, they're a little bit skinnier and they cut out the chance of any kind of scagging or pulling of the um, the fabrics. So I'm starting in sort of preparation mode. I've got my pieces of my belt here. So I'm going to sew them right sides together along the long sides. So I've got two of those. And I'm also going to sew my armhole bindings into a loop. So basically the short ends together, sew them together, and then they're 
prepared. So I'm just going to get those little jobs out of the way first. So I've sewn the length of my belt and I've got my little rouleau loop turner. So let me see. I just shove that in one open end if I can. Okay, there we go. And just shove it all the way to the end. I end up sticking it kind of into my belly. <laughs> and then when it pokes out the other end, what I do is you've got the, like this little flappy thing on it. And I end up sticking that through the fabric almost like a, a pin. I find these things very fiddly and I think that's because I'm not used to using them. I'm not, truth be told, I'm not really a big kind of a sewing tool person. So <laughs> pull it through and then turn it the right way out. Now I'm going to leave that down because I want to show you another way. If you don't have one of those little fancy tools, which I only had one recently, what I always used was, got myself in a bit of a knot here, I have one of these needles. So see those needles that I would have used this for like sewing up garments. So it's blunt on the end but it's got a big eye and I double thread it. So I've got four strands of thread coming out of it and I've put a knot in the end. And what I do is I get the end of my belt, trim off the loose threads, I put the needle in through the fabric now it's blunt, but it will go in through. And then I thread it through. And when I come to the end, I actually thread it through two of the strands. So I'm basically kind of making a loop. And then I shove that into the belt. And I feed it all the way through to the other end. So feed, feed, feed until it comes out the other end. And because it's blunt, it won't damage your fabric. And this is the way I've always, always done it. Okay, so it's out the other end. And then it's a matter of like pulling the thread so that you kind of start it moving. There, it's gone in already. And then Pull it through just like you would the rouleau loop turner. And there you go. So I always have that needle stuck in my pin cushion. And I just find that faster. <laughs> and it works a treat. So there you go. You get the idea. So that's the belts made. I know it's probably a funny way to start. But um, yeah, I just feel get those bits out of the way first. The next thing I'm going to do is I have my skirt pieces. So I've got tier three and tier two full of threads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them together. So I'm going to sew the short ends together. So right sides together and sew the short ends together. I've still got a pin on the top showing me which is the top for the bottom. I'm sure I have. Yes, here's my pin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock the sides. I'm actually going to overlock through the two layers. And then I'm actually going to overlock the top, not the bottom of it, just the top. And then when I come back to using it, um, to sew all the skirt pieces together, I know then that that is the top. And I'm going to do that on those two pieces. So we're going to start the bodice. So we've got our bodice piece here. We've got our interfaced bands here. And I've ironed them in half. And the pointy shape bit goes down the bottom here of the uh, front. So you take the pins off. I put a lot of pins onto this because I wanted to make sure that the green line was straight first. So pop one to one side and then 
right sides to right sides. Pop in a few pins. Now, so what you will notice is that down here in this corner, there's a little triangle extra and that's because our seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres and when we get to the end here to do our back stitching, it'll be there at that intersection. So we'll get on and do that and so we'll stitch down one and a half centimetre seam allowance on both sides and then we will overlock them and press. So we have our back piece and we have our piece of binding. What's really great about this is number one, we have it all prepared already. We've got our one centimetre uh, ironed up. And the other great thing is that this binding has been designed to fit nicely around the back neckline. Now I know a lot of people struggle with putting on binding around necks and end up where this little curve is here that it kind of it curls and it just doesn't fit right and that's because you're using generic bias binding and I find that people tend to stretch it. So you end up stretching your binding to fit around here which is the opposite of what you need to do. So basically you need to almost ease. So you want to ease your bias binding around that curve. So you want to kind of give yourself a little bit extra if at all possible. Now you're not going to end up with these kind of tucks, but you, yeah, you want to give yourself a little bit of extra fabric. So if you stretch it out, then your curve is going to curl up. You're going to end up with like little wavy bits on it. But I think we're very lucky here because we have our piece, which is the right side size. So I've pinned the centers there and I'm going to work my way back. Pin it in place there. I didn't even catch it. And then we're going to use this piece then to get around this curve. So I'm going to stitch with a one centimetre seam allowance and then I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what you want it to look like. So it's nice and flat. Um, we're going to trim back this seam allowance now. So I'm going to tr trim it back to about half. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little press, press the, the binding over like this, and then we're going to edge stitch. So essentially we're going to get this to focus. We're going to stitch on the edge here. So we're going to under stitch all across there. Move that out of the way and then we're going to understitch. Now, so I've just ironed it over. I've pushed this out of the way. So we just have our little seam allowance there. I'm basically then going to sew on top here, just along the edge. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the right side and there it is on the wrong side and that just makes sure that um, you get a nice finish on the edge when it's all turned to the right side. So go ahead and do some overlocking. So I've overlocked the bottom end, the side seams, I've also overlocked the shoulders and I've done the same on the fronts. So I've done the bottom ends, I've done the shoulder seams, and I've done the sides. And I've also made sure that I have my little notches there for my shoulder ruffles. So it's time now for us to start assembling the front to the back. 
So we have our front piece here. We've got our interfaced band and we're going to attach the shoulders together. So we have a little gathering then to do here on the top of the shoulders. So what we're going to do is we're going to pin. We're going to pin our little facing and you can see just there to the edge of where our binding is. Wasn't prepared. So we're going to pin that in place. And then we're going to do a gathering stitch. So I just, I gather by hand. So I've got a double threaded needle and I'm just going to run some nice even gathers across there by hand. And just as far as the facing, we're not gathering the facing. So I just pull them tight. And then I pin the two edges together. I'm going to back stitch by hand. That's the right length. Then I'm evening out my gathers. I'll do that when I'm sewing anyway. I'm going to pop another pin in here and then what we're going to do over here is we're going to fold our binding over and then fold our centimeter back. And then we're going to sew one and a half centimeter seam allowance straight across there, evening out our gathers as we go. And then this is basically how it looks. I've it pressed on the other side. So we just have these nice little soft gathers. So our next thing to do is to sew down our neck binding. So this is what it looks like as it intersects the shoulder. So we're basically going to pop in, I've just popped in, one pin there. I'm going to pop in a few more pins and then I'm going to just edge stitch the binding along here and then I'm going to do my side seam. So I'm going to right sides together one and a half centimeter seam allowance. I'm going to sew my two side seams and I'm going to press them open. Next up is our shoulder ruffles. So I've marked my shoulder notch there. I'm going to unpin my pattern piece. And this is the front side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a pin into the ruffle just to remind me that that is the front piece. Now I could use a marker. But I often find I can't find the marker after, or maybe when I've pressed it, I've actually ironed out the marking piece. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this works for me. 
Now, one one thing I did find was I folded it in half and I realised that the back piece is longer than the front. So that's another way of, of finding out. But by the time I get to that, I may have forgotten that detail. So a pin is handy. So this is the side here that we want to do a double rolled hem on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row of overlocking on it. Because I find that really handy on these viscoses to just strengthen the end. And then where the overlocking is, I can turn in one hem and then turn in the other or sometimes I'll turn in one hem I'll edge stitch it and then I'll turn in the other but I will show you the process as I go so I've done my double hem on one of them I overlocked and then I folded double as I went now I did find it a little bit fiddly so on the second one what I've done is I've pressed over one hem just over the overlocking and I'm going to fold the second and stitch as I go. So here we are at our armhole. We have our ruffle and now let the gathering begin. So I've just run a gathering thread across. I have a pin here to, to show my notch. I've still got my pin here to show me the front. I have my relevant armhole here. So. This is the front. I'm going to pin this center notch onto our shoulder seam. I'm not sure if it's fully the shoulder. I think it might be just dropped a little forward. Then look for my notch here on the front. And that's where the edge of my ruffle is going to be. Get my notch here back and do the same thing. Pin the edge of the ruffle. And then I'm going to pull my gathering threads. Now I apologize if I look awkward. <laughs> it's just really difficult to do these kind of things and keep them in the center of the camera. I don't know how people do it. Uh, I have a huge problem with it. <laughs> so I'm going to even out my, my gathers here and I'm going to pop a couple of extra pins in. I'm going to steal that pin from there. Oops, see, awkward. I'm going to pop my hand through the tripod, that might help. We've a lot of tractor action on today. We've got the farmers on both fields, left and right of me, who've decided to cut their grass today. So I've got two cats inside because they don't like the noise of the tractors. And because they're not outside, living their best life, they're not very happy. So I have lots of company today while I'm doing this. So along. Now again, evening out the gathers. Popping up, see. Can you be more awkward? I hope you can get the gist of it. Gathering. Then what we're going to do is we have a one centimeter seam allowance on the armhole because we're going to put our binding on. So what I'm going to do is in that seam allowance, so maybe half a centimeter in, I'm going to sew on top of these gathers, hold them all in place. And they're basically going to, that's basically basting this 
in place. And as I go, I'm going to even out my gathers so they look much neater than they look now. So I use my awl and my fingers to just even out the gathers as I go. <laughs> Again, apologies if I'm awkward, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see the sewing. I've just changed the angle of the camera. Every day's a school day. Then the thread runs out, but I got the whole thing sewed. <laughs> okay, so next up we have our armhole here with our lovely little frill on it. So basically, if you don't didn't want the frill or you don't want the frill, skip the entire last step. And then we have our armhole binding, which of course we've prepared already with our seam. And what we're going to do then is from the outside. We're going to line up our underarm seam and our binding seam. We're going to pin it in place and then we're basically going to pin our binding all around. And just be careful not to stretch your binding. And yeah, just keep pinning in place. And then just like our back binding, we're going to stitch with a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around. So this is how it looks. We've got our other fold there. So the next thing to do then is to trim down this seam to about half and then what I've done is I've gone with my iron and I've ironed my binding over onto the front and the back and then I'm going to edge stitch that down all the way around. I'm going to iron that little bit there again and taking a little bit of time there to iron is going to make all the difference to the finish. Now if you don't want to have top stitching shown on the outside there you could hand stitch down the binding. I think that would give a really nice finish as well. <laughs>
So here's what it looks like from the inside. I think it's a really nice finish. Uh, as I sewed from the inside, I made sure that the edge of my foot was along the edge of the binding. So I kept more of an eye on the edge of the foot than I did on the needle. And then that would make sure then on the outside that it's a nice and even row of stitching. I will admit I was tempted to hand stitch it, but I thought, no, I will go by... Um, the design of the pattern so yeah ruffles done on both sides cute so here's our bodice it's looking really cute the next thing we have to do then is just pin in place the overlap of the two front bands so you can see I've got a pin here I've measured up 1.5 that's the seam allowance and then what I'm going to do is where my pin sticks out here I want that pin to line up with the other front there so the two are intersecting as such pin there and put a pin over here and then I'm going to sew just on top of the overlocking there to hold the two of them in place and then next thing I've done is I've got my two parts of tier one so front and back and I've put them right sides together and I've sewn my seam here. I'm going to overlock here. I'm actually going to overlock these two separately because uh, when the dress is finished, I want to pop my belt section, my belt ends into this seam and it'll just be easier to unpick the little piece uh, if they're overlocked separately. Then I'm going to overlock the top and I'm going to overlock the bottom. Now we know the top on this because it's got the little shape there for the front. I've done a little notch here where the centre front is and I've also cut a little notch here for the centre back as well. Now that we have our bodice complete and here's our first layer of our skirt. So we're going to do lots of gathering now. So I'm going to show you how I pin this in place because this one has the little curve on the front. So I have my bodice right side out, I have my skirt wrong side out and I've marked my centres so I'm going to pin my centre fronts together then I'm going to pin my side seams together. There's not a lot of gathering as in there's not a lot of extra fabric to ease in. It's quite a nicely gathered skirt. So here we are at the centre back. And then we have our side seams to pin in place. So you can see there the front there's not a massive amount of gathering so I have threaded my trusty needle and I'm going to start gathering pinning in place like I did for the shoulder ruffles and then I'm going to sew in place with the sewing machine I do I always start off with a knot so you can use whatever method you like to gather. You can use the two rows of gathering stitches on your sewing machine if that's what you want. Um, I normally like gathering, not when I'm getting knots. So I'm going to continue along here. 
gathering. I have lots of practice in gathering from when I used to make very gathered bridesmaids dresses and I used to always gather like this by hand. I keep all of my like almost finished reels of thread for this reason. <laughs> Comes in quite handy. Now I'm already at the centre. So what I'm actually going to do here is I've it all gathered in there as much as I can and then I'm going to open it out until they're the same width and I'm actually going to back stitch in here so I'm going through all the layers so essentially I could take out the pin and then I'm going to gather on so then I just have to go back and even that out now I'm going to gather over to the side seam I'm going to take out the pin because that saves the thread catching around the pin as I gather. I'm here at the side seam and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my needle through all the layers Loosen it out, do a back stitch. I think I probably only have enough thread in my needle now to get to the center back, and then I'll re-thread my needle and do the rest of it. So here's tier one attached to the bottom. Now there's not a lot of gathering at the front. Uh, in fact, I almost had to force some of the gathers in, but honestly, it it doesn't. It doesn't matter at all. There's a lovely little swing out of it. On the back, definitely more gathering. So I've got bodice tier one and I've got tier two here. And because I just overlocked the top of tier two, uh, what feels like ages ago, I know that this is the right way up and I haven't overlocked this side yet. I'm going to overlock this after I've got these two attached. So I have my side seams and I'm going to mark the centre of the front, the centre of the back. So I'm just putting a pin. Then I'm finding the centre. And then I'm going to do the same on here. So I've got my side seams. Put the side seams together and then find the centre of the back. centre of the front and we're going to repeat what we did in the last step. So dress right side out, turn the skirt inside out and then basically I always start with the side seams, match up your side seams Let's see how much gathering we're going to have this time. There's a lot less gathering than you would imagine in these, as in a lot less fabric to gather. So there we go. I guess it's probably 1.5 less, maybe? Um, yep, so they're matched up. Matter of gathering by hand or 
if that's the way you like. Um, now, if you're going to gather by machine, obviously you'd have to have your gathering stitches done first, then find your centers, um, your quarters, and then pull your gathering threads. So I'm going to go ahead now and gather up, and I'll show you what it looks like for the third tier. So obviously our dress is getting longer with every layer. There's my gathers, so not massively gathered as you can see. And now we're onto the last layer. So I've overlocked the bottom end and I've got my third tier here. Because this tier is actually quite wide, I have not only marked my center pieces, I've actually marked my quarters. So I have my side seams for reference. I have my center front and back. And then I brought my center front pin or my center back pin to my side seam and I halved that and I got a quarter there. And I'm going to do the same then on this tier. So I'm going to bring my two side seams together, find my center here, put a pin in, then bring that pin to the side seam, get my quarter, bring that center pin to the other side seam and then get that quarter and I'm going to do that with the back as well and then I'm going to repeat the process that we just did for adding tier 2 to tier 1. I'm going to match up all my pins on my two layers gather and sew together. Now how absolutely beautiful is our dress looking now? Uh, for me at five foot I really like the full full length so what I've done is I've over length over locked the end and I've ironed up three centimeters and I'm going to sew that hem now. Now I'm also adding the belt um, so here is my belt. What I did with my first dress was I tried on the dress and I literally tied the belt around myself to find the place that I liked. And that was five centimetres down from the seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpick a couple of stitches here in my side seam, slot in my belt and then sew it up. So once you've found your comfortable spot for your belt, Mark that spot then on your pattern pieces and when you're sewing up your first tier you can pop your belt in then at that stage. I'm just leaving it until last because in this sew along I'm the only person who has tried on their dress and found the perfect spot for their belt. Now the other little alteration I have to do on mine and that's only because I'm so short I found that this opened a little bit too much for me and you could see my bra inside so what I did on my first dress was I tried it on and I put a pin and I actually pinned and sewed up this intersection here and that just felt a little bit more secure for me but if you're taller than me obviously there's quite a number of you um, you probably won't have to do that. Now I just thought I'd show you I'm sewing the hem and rather than sewing on the wrong side, I like to sew on the right side. And I've lined up the edge of my fabric here to my two and a half centimeter seam allowance. So I'm not even going to look at the needle. I'm going to keep an eye on the two and a half centimeter here. And then I know I have a nice even line of stitching. I find it easier on the outside than on the inside because I'm also looking at like my overlocking stitch. So. Our last job, which I almost forgot, I will admit, is to put the elastic into the back. So on the materials page, you'll find your length of elastic to do with your size. So I've made the size 38, so the centimetres, the length of the elastic is actually 38 centimetres. So I've cut my piece of elastic. I found the centre of it and it goes then into your back 
seam between your bodice and your skirt. So I'm going to match up my centers. I've already found the center there of that seam. I'm going to put a pin there. I'm actually going to put two pins just to make it stay because I do find sometimes it'll ping. So keeping your elastic flat, bring it over to your side seam and pin it there. And then again, keeping it flat without twisting, bring it over to your side seam there. And then what you're going to do is start off here sewing it and then stretch the elastic out and sew it there within the seam allowance. So I have changed my stitch to a zigzag and I just prefer to sew it on with a zigzag. first couple of stitches without pulling and then you just want to stretch out the elastic make sure that your skirt isn't coming into it like a bit of a mess underneath and then sew it across set it at quite a regular zigzag so it's the same width as length. Come up to my pins. Check underneath just in case. And there you can see just a little bit of extra. Uh, tightening it gives. Dress number two is done. It is so pretty and floaty. It is definitely the ultimate summer dress to wear in this very hot weather over here. So loads of swish in the skirt. You can see the length of it on me just comes down to I guess the the <laughs> the bend the bend in my foot here's the cute little ruffles um, I haven't actually sewn up the front of it here funnily enough now I've made the very same size as this one this one doesn't feel like it's gaping maybe initially when I tried that one on I just felt it, it gaped I don't know um, that can happen sometimes too, can't it? So, love the little frills. Now, here's the belt. So, sorry I've had to cut my head off for this, but anyway. Um, you get to see the dress, that's far more important. So, here's the belt. So, I've put it at kind of where, when I bend, it's where the crease is. That's the only way I can find my waist lately. Um, so, it's a really long belt, obviously, because it's the length of the fabric. What I do is I cross it at the front. Now I don't pull it because then that brings the side seams very far forward. So I make sure that my side seams are still there at the side. And then I cross it at the back. And then I pull it to the front and I kind of tie it off to one side. And I quite like that look. Then I kind of even out the gathers a little bit. Now. If you want it, you could put like little belt hoops into that place and you could put like a little narrow belt. That was my first plan, but I couldn't find a belt. So hence why I have that. So it is quite nice open. It's just not the look that I 
personally feel comfortable in. Um, it is really lovely and floaty, <laughs> I will say that, but it's just not something that I feel comfortable in. So it is lovely and comfy, but not, yeah, not comfortable for me, if that makes any sense at all. So that is the finished dress. I hope that you found the sew along um, helpful. Uh, I hope you enjoy making your Leah dress or like two for me. Uh, there may be a third one. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much for uh, purchasing the sew along or pur purchasing the kit. And yeah, I'll see you all in um, another sew along. Bye.